It's Riskified, a good investment. Let's run through the bull and bear case to find out. My name is Brian Feraldi. And my name is Brian Stoffel. Brian, for those that have never heard of this relatively new company to the public market, what does Riskified do? So Riskified offers a very interesting value proposition for e-commerce companies. They want frictionless fraud management for e-commerce, which basically means reduce fraud and increase sales. But how do you do that? Um, they believe that they have artificial intelligence that will help lift sales and prevent fraud. It lifts sales by approving uh, certain people to get the things that they want to purchase, and it prevents fraud by being able to identify those that are going to cause a chargeback for the company. And there are estimates that 10 to 15 percent of all e-commerce uh, purchases are denied because they're worried about fraud. They can also stop abuse of loyalty programs um, and, and reward people that are using it in a way that it's meant to be. Um, and they can help uh, payments go through more quickly. We, all, all of these things are great for the company. What's really interesting is that if there is a problem, if Riskified is wrong and they approve someone who shouldn't have been approved, Riskified will cover that uh, balance. So it reduces the risk for the e-commerce company. And if you look at this, they go through five different companies here. And on the left, you see the decrease in costs um, net of the fees. So in other words, these companies are spending less either on managing risk management or on chargebacks. And on the right, those are increased sales because people who previously were considered too risky are now considered potential customers and it works out. So it's working on both ends, reducing costs, reducing chargebacks, increasing the fence around people who are eligible to buy something from you. And importantly, all of this, all of this AI, all of these tools, they plug into different things uh, like account security, payments, optimization. The point being that as a company uses Riskified, Riskified is plugged into all these different nodes, which makes the switching costs away from this much higher. Yeah, the big takeaway for me is this is a company that you partner with if you're into e-commerce and you want to increase sales and decrease fraud. And if you're wrong, if Riskified doesn't do that for you, Riskified is on the hook, not you. That is a very compelling uh, proposition. So let's talk from an investment. What's kind of the bull case, uh, bull, bull case here? First off, their annual dollar retention rate is with 98% in 2020. The best that this number could be is 100%. That means that their churn rate essentially was 2% throughout the year. That shows how sticky this product is. Now, if you look at the dollar-based net retention rate, which factors in existing customers that stick around spending more, that figure was 117%. That's pretty darn good. But what's really impressive is that this company caters to the needs of travel companies and ticketing companies. And those industries got smashed in 2020. If you exclude those two industries, this company's net dollar rate retention rate was 158%. That is off the charts good and shows you just how strong this company's competitive advantage is once they become installed. So what's the bull case moving forward? Well, this is a founder-led businesses. The two co-founders are still involved, have a lot of skin in the game, and own tons of stock. Love to see that. Two, once Riskified gets embedded into one of their customers' platforms, these switching costs are very high to rip them out. And there is an argument to be made that the bigger this company gets and the more transactions it improves, the smarter it AI becomes providing a little bit of a network effect. Three, this is a win-win business model. Riskified makes money when its customers make money. So its incentives are beautifully aligned. And it's almost a no-brainer from the customer's perspective. You partner with Riskify and they promise to increase sales, lower fraud, and if they're wrong, they pay for it. That's really compelling. Finally, financially, this company is in great shape. They are already free cash flow positive and they have an incredibly strong balance sheet. But what's the bear case? Because given all of that, it's important to look at what the other side of the coin is. First, we've got to keep in mind that this is artificial intelligence. It can feel like a black box. And the question is, how differentiated is this company's AI as compared to what someone else can build? As two people who aren't AI experts, that's always difficult to tell. Second, there is significant customer concentration. One customer 
was 18% of sales. The second one was 10% of sales. We know that they have some big names like Context Logic or Wish and Wayfair. There's a lot of other names in there. It should be mentioned, this is headed in the right direction. Those customers are becoming less and less a percentage of revenue as time goes on. Third, um, if there's an economic downturn, this company could be hit exceptionally hard because this is the flip side of scaling up, of winning when your customers win. It means you're going to lose more when your customers lose and sales go down. And finally, you you have to educate your customers. You have to convince them to hire you to do something that you're likely already doing in-house. That no-brainer pitch helps, but it's still it still can be hard to convince others that they that you will do a better job. And then at some point, those others might decide to take it back in-house after they learn about it. So that's something you have to keep in mind. All right. Now we're going to give you the checklist scores that we came up when we ran this company through. But before we do that, you ever wondered where Brian and I learned all this stuff about how to pick investments and how to research them? The answer for both of us is the same. The Motley Fool. Both of us actually met at The Motley Fool and were paying subscribers to their products for years. If you're interested in joining The Motley Fool's flagship stock advisor service, visit fool.com slash Feraldi. That's fool.com slash Feraldi to receive a 50% off discount. All right, Brian, let's talk about how this company scored on our checklists. On my checklist, it got a 71, which is well into my investable range. But importantly, my checklist punishes companies that are newly public. There is ample room for that score to improve over time. So that's actually a really impressive number given where this company is in its face. And for mine, it was in right about that same range. If you look at our two charts, just into the yellow, it's robust, an eight and a half. And for me, not knowing as much about the AI advantage is part of it, but that customer concentration is the other part. As time goes on, if they continue to execute, that will be less important and the score could go up significantly. Impressive starting scores, and there's room for this company to continuously improve over time. So overall, very impressive so far. But what are we going to be watching if you're an investor in Riskified? First is going to be that net and gross re retention rate. Those figures are going to indicate how high the switching costs on and is the company convincing its existing customers to spend more? That would be important. Two, are customers deciding to take this service back in-house? Is paying for Riskified worth the investment? So far, the answer there is clearly yes, but there could be some big companies that just get big enough that they decide we're going to do this ourselves. Three is customer concentration lowering over time. This is rapidly heading in the right direction, and I would love it if this company got all of its customers below 10% of sales, but for right now, that's going to be something to watch. Overall, Brian, I think both of us were very impressed with Riskified, RSKD, and it was a fascinating business to research. It was. I love the business model. I think it's really interesting, and I am excited to continue following it. Same here. What company should we do next? Please let us know in the comment section below. We will see you next time.